Good morning. Welcome to worship on this Pentecost Sunday. For our announcements, we know that after worship today, there'll be a consistory meeting. Is that in the fellowship hall or here? It's in the fellowship hall. It's in the fellowship hall, okay. And are there any other announcements that need to be made? We had our first Women's Guild meeting in over a year today. And thank you ladies for coming, I appreciate that. Um, we had to make some decisions about the bazaar. We have decided that we are gonna have a bazaar this year and that we are gonna have to all pull together because we are slim in numbers this year. Um, we also decided that we were gonna do kraut on June the 3rd. Thursday, it's Thursday, whatever that Thursday is, the first Thursday in June. <laughs> but June the 3rd, um, at starting at 8 o'clock in the Fellowship Hall, and anybody who wants to come and grind the cabbage and stuff the jars, we would appreciate all assistance. Um, we are going to do noodles um, as well, and those are going to be done on September 23rd. It's on my paper over there. Um, 21st through the 22nd. Maybe 20th through the 22nd. Thank you, ma'am. 20th through the 22nd, we're going to start at 8 o'clock. So um, that's a Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday um, of that week, and we're going to start at 8 o'clock. All who can help, please put that on your calendars. This is a big draw for us, and um, we would like all assistance because we, like I said, are slim in numbers. So anybody who can help, we would greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Leslie, we're looking forward to getting back to the bazaar again after a year off there. Uh, also upcoming next week, uh, the fifth Sunday of the month, a special love offering to benefit the Good Samaritan Fund. Today we are celebrating communion, and the way we do this now is we come forward here and partake of the bread, partake of the cup, and then there's uh, a wastebasket to dispense of the cup after you're done. So we commune right here at the front. Uh, so be in prayer and preparation before you come, and then when you sit down, commune here. We'll begin with the choir first to come forward, and then we'll just come forward this way, and re then return to your pew. Any other questions or comments or announcements that we need to make? Okay, Pentecost commemorates the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles. Today we celebrate the birth of the church. Let's take a moment to be honest with God and ourselves about our failings, knowing that our prayers will be met with God's love. Come, let us pray and sing praises to God who fills the world with forgiveness and grace. 
Let us join together in singing our opening hymn, Spirit of the Living God. join responsively in the call to worship. Come Holy Spirit, inspire our hearts with your fiery presence. Come Holy Spirit, energize our lives to work for God. Come, Holy Spirit, pour your blessing on us and fill us with your love. Let your presence challenge us to proclaim God's presence and love in everything we say and do. Amen. Let us join together in unison prayer of confession. O oh God, we have heard the Pentecost story. Your spirit is here, your church is born, and the day of the Lord is coming. You have gathered all people together in your spirit, and you have brought life to all valleys of death. Still, O oh Lord, we cannot trust, for we fear our bones are beyond repair. Still, O oh Lord, we turn away, for we fear our hope is lost. Still, O oh Lord, we imagine isolation, for we fear we are cut off from your presence. Forgive us, Holy One, as you did for your first church, breathe the fire of life into us. As you did for your prophet Ezekiel, reveal to us your life-giving presence, quench our needs and satisfy our love, that we may come back to you and be sent forth to fill the world with your mercy and grace. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, who is at work within us. Amen. Every 
song to feel the spirit, especially today. Thank you, choir. And now we have a children's message for our young people. If you would come forward here on the carpet and Kevin will bring us a good message. Good morning. How's everybody doing today? Good. Very good. Very good. We have some visitors today. Welcome. We're glad you're here with us, ladies. Um, I've got a picture here. Can any of you tell what's going on in this picture? There, there's fire coming down out of the sky in the picture, isn't it? That's right. Well, this is a picture of an artist's conception of what happened on this day a long time ago, about 2,000 years ago, right around in that neighborhood. The apostles had gathered together and uh, were in a building on Sunday after Jesus had recently ascended into heaven. After his resurrection, the apostles saw him, but then he told him he was going back into heaven. But he told them he was going to send one of the other members of the Godhead. We believe there are three members, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, that he was going to send the Spirit to them. And on this day, about 2,000 years ago, he spent, sent that spirit. Now, many of us consider this day to be the birthday of the church. What do you usually do on a birthday? Uh, celebrate. And do you sing any songs? Yeah. What do you sing? Uh, maybe. I'm not sure about that. You're ahead of me on that one if it is. Well... Why do you say we sing happy birthday to the church today? You want to do that? And just say dear church when it gets to the part? And should we let everybody else join in with us? Yeah. All right, let's do that. Okay, so here we go. Da, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear church. Happy birthday to you. 225 years ago, the building, you're right, that good. You've been paying attention. I'm glad to hear that, Dale. Okay, but the, the Christian church is approximately 2,000 years old today. So we're very grateful for that because the God the Father was made manifest at creation and, and continues to create through time. And in Jesus being created and coming to this earth, and then Jesus was made manifest to us when he came to earth, and then the Spirit comes to us on Pentecost. So today is very important about the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit does all kinds of wonderful things for us. 
The Holy Spirit's what comes into your brain and talks you into inventing something new that's important. So as you guys grow older, you'll be hearing a lot from the Holy Spirit while you're in school. And then even when you are older, when you get really old like me, then the Holy Spirit still comes to you, but he has new things that he whispers to you when you get older. And they're about surprises that you're going to see as you get older and eventually when you leave this earth. But when you're young like you, the Holy Spirit is giving you ideas about things that are going to happen in your life and how you can help other people. So we're very grateful that the Holy Spirit came to us on Pentecost. And let's have a prayer about that, okay? Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for these children and all children. Keep them in your loving care. We especially today give you thanks for the Holy Spirit and for its guidance throughout our lives from the time that we are young until we are old. We pray these things in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now I've got some pictures for you today that are similar to the picture that um, I showed you, but this one will be a little bit easier to color. If you could maybe pass those out, Rayla, be sure to uh, give some to our guest over here today. I think this will be enough. And let's see, I've got crayons over here for you. There you are, if you'll pass those out to them. Now be sure that you only color on these pieces of paper, okay? We don't want to <laughs> change the colors of anything here in the church. And there you are. And then, uh, do any of you guys know anybody that likes candy? Oh, okay, all right, well here, let's get you some candy. Take those over to our guest first, if you will, please. Oh, I'm sure you would. <laughs> there you are, Dale, if you'll pass that to Brody. And, of course, Brody is our guest today, too, but Brody comes a lot, so he's almost like one of us now. So we're glad you're here, though, Brody. Okay, you can go back to your seats. Thank you much. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, children, on this birthday of the church. Terrific. We have a time for the pastoral prayer just want to give an update on Doug Lyerly. He's still in the ICU at Northeast. He has what is called COVID pneumonia. And it's, uh, they're treating the pneumonia, and he had to go on uh, BiPAP for a while. But as of last night, he was doing better. He was eating some fruit and food, and uh, Karen sounded more positive on his report. So keep Doug in our prayers. And uh, who else besides those who are named here with us? Safe travels for Kathy's sister later this week. Okay, yes, we want to have safe travel. Well, let's take these names and concerns and join our hearts and minds together in a time of prayer. Let us pray. Lord our God, we praise you for you created all things even as the Spirit hovered over the waters from the very beginning. And even now we give thanks for the coming of the Holy Spirit upon us, upon those first apostles as they were given the words to write down for the New Testament and for the spirit that spoke through the prophets of the old. We thank you, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord, that you've sent your son who was filled with the Holy Spirit beyond measure and it came back to you for the resurrection and through the ascension that we might receive that Holy Spirit that he sent to us. Lord, we thank you and praise you for the gift of eternal life and that the truth that we can follow your commandments and as we do and love you and the Son and the Holy Spirit that you will make your home with us and abide in us. What a great and glorious truth for which we give thanks. And Lord, we remember all these who need your special touch of healing, physically, spiritually, emotionally. And hear our prayers as we name them silently from our hearts.
Lord, we pray that you would bring your healing uh, to these whom we've named and lifted up to you, physical, spiritual healing, and may they know the peace that comes from Jesus Christ because he's promised that he has given us peace, not as the world gives, does he give to us. And help us not to let our hearts be troubled and not to let them be afraid. And Lord, as we live each day, help us to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh of the natural person. Guide us by your spirit through your word. Help us, Lord, to bear fruit of the spirit in our lives, fruit of love and joy and peace and patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control, all those good things that are manifest as the spirit lives in us and through us. We give you thanks that the pandemic is receding and we pray for those countries where it seems to be going too strongly. Help them get the resources they need, Lord, and bring healing to them. And may the gospel of Jesus Christ spread throughout all those countries that everyone might have the hope and the joy of, and the anchor of their souls that is only found in your son, the only way to you. For there is no other name under heaven we know by which men must be saved except Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. And we pray it all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today is a familiar passage from Ezekiel 37. And we probably know this passage best from the old song, Dem Bones. You remember that song? And this is chapter 37, verses 1 through 14 of Ezekiel. Hear God's holy word. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. I will lay sinews upon you and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and ye shall live and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied there was a noise and behold a shaking and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves and shall put my spirit in you and ye shall live and I shall place you in your own land, then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And then our New Testament reading, of course, is the account in Acts of the Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit, in chapter 2, beginning with the first verse. Before we hear the reading from the New Testament, let us bow in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this day and for your word. And there are many thoughts that are trying to impinge upon our hearts and minds at this time. And we pray that you would silence any other voice in us but your own, that we might hear you speaking to us through your word by the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Hear the word of God. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. They were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia and Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others, mocking, said, These men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day, But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit And they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. May the Lord bless the reading and hearing of God. God's holy word. pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. 
the birthday of the church. It's great to see so much red here today. Reminding us of the flame of the Holy Spirit promised and accounted for to us in the New Testament account how the Holy Spirit filled those apostles on that day and the strange manifestation of how they were speaking in other tongues and all the people there were gathered for Pentecost from all around the world. They heard them speaking in their own language. And what does that mean? And how can we get a deeper understanding of Pentecost and the Holy Spirit? There is a lot of confusion even today in the church over the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit? Or more appropriately, who is the Holy Spirit? How does he function? Well, that's what we want to look at today. This is the Holy Spirit Day, Pentecost. And it is the birthday of the church. And the Bible says that the church is built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ being the cornerstone. So we have the foundation laid by the prophets and the apostles. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit gave them words to speak of the wonderful works of God. And everyone heard them speaking that in their own tongue. And it's important to know that the Holy Spirit is not an impersonal force, like something from Star Wars, may the force be with you. The Holy Spirit is a person. And throughout the scripture, the pronouns that refer to the Holy Spirit are male. He, him, his. So first we need to understand that God is a personal God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Three persons in one. So it's helpful to realize that the Holy Spirit is a person who loves us and who came upon those apostles in that Pentecost. And it says he filled the apostles on that day. And what he was doing, he was fulfilling the promise that Christ had made to his disciples, to his apostles especially on the night before his crucifixion and the days preceding where he told them, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm going to send an advocate, a counselor, a comforter. And he's going to do several things. He's going to help remind you of the words that I have said and he's going to guide you into all truth and he's going to teach you all things. So they were remembering that. This is the promise Jesus gave of the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit came and filled them, they were speaking these words in languages that the whole world could understand because he was speaking in every language that was gathered there. You heard the list that I read this morning all those different peoples and nations gathered there. And what were the apostles saying in these languages? What did the people gathered there hear them speaking? Well, the passage tells us. They heard them speaking about the wonderful works of God. And you can imagine what that would be from the beginning. God spoke and created all things. He created the heavens and the earth. They were praising God for creation. He, he made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. They were praising him for the mighty works of rescuing them from slavery in Egypt. Praising them for guiding them to this promised land where they were. Praising them for the laws and the doctrine that they had received through Moses' hand praising them, telling them of the wonderful works of God. But what did the hearers think of all this? Oh, they must be drunk. 
Aren't these Galileans? They're not graduates of some esteemed university where they learn 18 different languages. They couldn't understand the working of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will always lift up Jesus Christ and lift up God, the Father. And the Holy Spirit works and uses words. He used the words that these apostles used to praise the works of God. The Holy Spirit works with words, inspires men with words, helps them recall the words of Jesus Christ, teaches them all things in words that they can remember and hide in their heart. And he filled the apostles with God's words of truth. So the Jews from all the nations heard him speaking in their own language, proclaiming those wonderful works and they were understandable to them. They, they knew them. They knew what was being said because it was about the works of God. They knew their Bibles, their Old Testaments. Genesis, these were Jews brought up in the scriptures of the Old Testament. But they could not explain rationally how these Galileans could do that. Well, this is the birthday of the church. This is when it started. The foundation of the church was laid. The apostles would speak and then write down these words of God given by the Holy Spirit, and it became the New Testament. Remember, there was no New Testament at that time of the apostles. So as they proclaimed these words, uh, as Jesus had told them, I'm going to lead you into all truth. And so they began proclaiming this truth. I'm going to teach you all things. They began proclaiming it and then writing it down. But to confirm that these words from God were from God and from the Holy Spirit, there were signs and wonders given and miracles given at that time so people would know these are men of God, holy men of God, inspired by the Holy Spirit of God, wrote down these things and proclaimed them that men and women would know what God wanted them to know about salvation. And so... The signs were given to them, a sign that they could speak in different languages, signs of healing, signs of raising from the dead given to them to affirm the words that were being spoken. And they wrote down this New Testament and the church then became the ground and pillar of the truth of God's word. You remember what Jesus said? said in his prayer the night before his crucifixion, Lord, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. So Jesus said, I'm leading those apostles into all truth. They're writing it down. Now the apostles are going to die, but they left us the truth in the Bible, in the New Testament. So we have that. And Jude was writing, and he said, you know what? We must contend for the faith once for all delivered to the saints. So it was given to the apostles, given to those saints of God, and it was proclaimed, and it was written, and we have that by the Holy Spirit. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's God-breathed. And we have that. Holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So that's the foundation of the church. Now once you lay a foundation and build on that, do you have to then lay another foundation on top of that? No, that's ridiculous, isn't it? Every building has one foundation. 
And we know Jesus Christ is the cornerstone of that foundation. The apostles' words given by the Holy Spirit are the rest of that foundation, then it's built up into a living temple. We don't say, well, we're going to add now to that foundation new thoughts, new revelations that we might have through dreams or whatever. We have the foundation of the church. And the church is the ground and pillar of that truth, and we are to contend for it. Now, I wanted to comment on another word that came in this passage is prophesying. Because Peter said, what you're hearing is what was proclaimed and foretold by the prophet Joel, that he'll pour out his spirit on all flesh, and young men and young women will both prophesy. Now, what do you think of when you hear the word prophesy? It's usually foretelling something that's going to happen in the future, right? That is one explanation of prophecy. But prophesying simply meant to proclaim the words of God and explain God's words to others. You know, in the early colonies in, in New England and in the pilgrims, they would come together on Sunday and it said they would prophesy. And what did that mean? They gave sermons. They expounded on the word of God. That was prophesying. And so the Holy Spirit came and put God's truth in these men and they prophesied God's words that we might have them for all time. And Jesus said, you know, heaven and earth are going to pass away, but my words will never pass away. So prophesying is to speak those words of God. And that comes through the Holy Spirit giving those words to those who believe in God and believe in Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit was promised to be poured out on all flesh. Now, what does that mean, the Holy Spirit poured out on all flesh? How are they filled with the Holy Spirit? We have images of being filled like water filling a tank. But to be filled with the Holy Spirit is to be filled with those words of God that he wanted them to know and to have. I'm going to lead you into all truth. I'm going to teach you all things. How is that done? Through the words that I give you. They were filled with the Holy Ghost and they were filled with the words of God. The Holy Spirit works through words, working with the word that he gave them in their hearts. Who dwells in our hearts? Well, we think the Holy Spirit dwells in us, but did you know that the Bible says that Jesus Christ lives in you? And you remember the New Testament says, I pray that Jesus might live in your heart by faith. And we think, well, Jesus ascended to heaven. He's on the right hand of God. And yet he lives in our heart by faith. And we say, well, he's omnipresent. Well, Jesus has been resurrected in a new body and he sits at the right hand of God the Father. The Holy Spirit comes bringing us words and here's a key to understanding how Jesus and the Father dwell in our hearts. And it comes from Psalm 119, where the author says, Thy word have I hid in my heart. His heart was full of the words of God. And heart, of course, means mind and thoughts and memories filled with the words of God dwelling in them. Jesus says, dwell in me and I and my word will dwell in you. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, living in you. Now, the word of God is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit uses God's word. 
And they always work together. So may Christ dwell in your hearts by faith through the word that he gives us. The other thing that comes up is the Holy Spirit is a word of power. What did Jesus say in the first chapter of Acts? When the people were saying, well, are you going to reestablish the kingdom now? And he said, that's not for you to know, but you need to wait in Jerusalem until you receive power by the Holy Spirit coming upon you. There, the Holy Spirit is related with power and it has to do with the words of God that are coming to them. We can see the word of God throughout all the scriptures and all creation. He spoke and it came into being. And he continues all things by the power of his word, Hebrews 1.3. He continue, all things are upheld by the power and by the word of power. The word of his power. You see, we, God wanted you and I to know about the Holy Spirit and how it works with God's word to help us to know the truth and to live that truth and then manifest that truth in our own lives. So we are to wait in Jerusalem as a metaphor. Wait in God's word daily. Filling your heart, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. That you might bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Wait in God's word every day and you'll receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Flesh avails nothing, Jesus said. The spirit gives life. The words I have spoken, Jesus said, are spirit and they are life, John 6. It's not a mystery that we can't understand. He's given you a gift that you might bear fruits to his glory and praise. So I will encourage you to be filled with the Holy Spirit and to be filled with God's word each and every day. The Holy Spirit working in and through God's word, the fullness and the fullness of God's revelation to man that you might be led by all truth. And bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit in your life as you fill your heart and mind with God's word. It will influence your heart as you believe in him. You will be sanctified by the truth. You will be set apart to bear good things to the glory of God as you dwell in the word each day. Live in it. Let it dwell in your heart. Be filled with the Holy Spirit through the word of God. The word is impersonal, but it works with the Holy Spirit who is a person. They're together. They're not to be separated apart. Let us give thanks today on this Pentecost Sunday for the gift of the Holy Spirit that lives in you as you believe in Jesus Christ and give your lives to the Lord. For all who believe in Jesus Christ, the promise is to them and to you. Let us bow in prayer. Father God, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit for your word which never passes away. May we have the spirit dwell in us richly through the word of Christ. For we pray it in Jesus' name, amen.
to the table not just as individuals, but as a community. By sharing the loaf and the cup, Christ makes us one with him and with each other. Let us join in the thanksgiving. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right for us to give thanks and praise. With joy we praise you, gracious Father, for you have created heaven and earth, made us in your image, and kept covenant with us, even when we fell into sin. We give you thanks for Jesus Christ, our Lord, who by his glorious resurrection overcame the power of sin and gave us new life. Therefore, we join our voices with all the saints and angels and the whole creation to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to God the Father that our Savior Jesus Christ, before he suffered, gave us this memorial of his sacrifice until he comes again. At his last supper, the Lord Jesus took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray. Lord, our God, send your Holy Spirit so that this bread and cup may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. May we and all your saints be united with Christ and remain faithful in hope and love. Gather your whole church, O Lord, into the glory of your kingdom. We pray in the name of Jesus who taught us all to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may come forward and partake of the elements and then return to your places. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you.
join together in the prayer after communion. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us sing our closing hymn, Breathe on Me, Breath of God. Now go out into the world in peace, have courage, holding on to what is good, returning no one evil for evil. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. Amen.